In this video, I'll be going over the new Killer Pyramid head and sharing my thoughts about his power and the new perks. Let's begin by taking a look at his attributes. He has a standard 32 meter tear radius and movement speed of most killers, so nothing too special there. But his power is where things get interesting. There are four components to his power, so let's go over each one by one. Rights of Judgment allows Pyramid Head to carve trenches into the ground. These trails last for 75 seconds by default, and lower the killer's move speed by 5% while walking. Survivors who stand on these trails will be revealed to the killer and become afflicted by torment, a new debuff that allows the killer to instantly send down survivors to a hook. Or to be technically correct, a cage of atonement, which is basically a hook, but won't trigger survivor or killer perks that are based on hooks, which means no bar of time and no D-strike, making these cages more dangerous than getting hooked normally. One thing to keep in mind about this mechanic is that players who are sent to a cage of atonement will always be sent to a cage on the opposite end of the map. Knowing this will let you get into a position to unhook them faster. You can avoid getting sent to cages by avoiding torment, one method being by crouching over its trails. Or you can remove torment by saving an ally who's in a cage of their own. Pyramid Head can also end chases faster by casting a shockwave. This ability has an 8 meter radius and can pass through obstacles making it a powerful tool to end chases faster. However, it does have a short wind-up time, consumes some of your power gauge, and has a cooldown whether you hit or miss. But don't get me wrong, when it comes to chases, this pyramid's no square. And the last component of his power, Final Judgment, allows him to execute survivors who are tormented and on their last hook. So that's Pyramid Head's power. But what about his perks? Force Penance afflicts survivors with a broken status effect when they take a hit for an ally. This is probably Pyramid Head's worst perk, and here's why. If you chase the player with a broken status effect, then they can't heal anyways because you're chasing them. And if you go after the player they protected, then they can simply work on a generator and wait for it to expire, since they know you're chasing someone else and won't feel the need to heal immediately. His second perk, Trio of Torment, allows him to become undetectable after kicking a generator. This perk is better than his last, but still underwhelming. While it can let you cast survivors by surprise, it has a really long cooldown and an almost counterintuitive drawback of revealing the generator you kicked all survivors, putting them on high alert for a sneak attack. And his last perk, Deathbound, causes survivors to scream and become oblivious whenever they heal an ally 32 meters away from the killer. This is probably his best perk, as it lets him locate two survivors by the scream and sneak up on one survivor who's oblivious. There are two drawbacks to this perk though, the first being that they have to be 32 meters away, but that usually isn't a problem because survivors tend to heal only when they're far away from the killer. And the second issue is that if the survivor self heals, this perk won't activate. But meeting these conditions isn't too hard, and I do think the perk will see some use. So that's it for your wedge head, and now let's take a look at the new survivor perks. First we have Soul Guard. This grants the endurance effect for a short time after being revived, and allows you to revive yourself if the killer has a hex totem. Now this is a perk that looks good on paper, but in practice, you'll be lucky if it triggers once during your match. Half of the benefits Soulguard offers relies on the killer running a hex perk, and the endurance effect is only useful to killers nearby when you get revived. And if the killer picks you up, as most killers do, then you won't get a chance to use this perk. This is probably Cheryl's best perk though, and while it's not bad, I probably still want to run a perk that's more reliable like Unbreakable. Up next is Blood Pact. This allows you and the obsession to see each other's auras. It also grants a small movement speed boost for both players if either of them heal each other. While being able to see your teammate's aura is useful, this perk does have some problems. The speed boost it offers oftentimes won't be helpful, since you'll be killing your teammate far away from the killer. The perk also only triggers when one of you is injured, which makes me wonder, why not just use Empathy? If the Obsession dies, the perk becomes useless, and if you're the Obsession, or nobody's running Obsession perks, then Blood Pack does nothing. If I want to keep track of my teammates, there are better options. And our last perk is Repressed Alliance. After working on the generator for a minute, this perk gives you the power to block it, preventing both the killer and your allies from accessing it. It also prevents the gen from losing progress, so it can counter effects like Hex Ruin. But blocking a gen could backfire if one of your teammates are nearby wanting to repair it. Also, there's only a handful of scenarios where you want to lock a gen. Typically, only if the killer has Pop Goes the Weasel or Ruin would you want to lock it. Other than those scenarios, I can't really think of a reason to equip this over something else. So that's Pyramid Head and all the new perks covered. But maybe you already knew what they all did and want to just hear my thoughts. So overall, I like the new killer power. It's not a copy of anything we currently have in the game. It's unique. It has multiple ways you can use it. I think it's definitely strong. He might even be getting nerfed. The cooldowns feel okay. The conditions to activate the power make sense. 
survivors have counterplay available to them, and the killer himself is just a horror icon. Very cool to have him in the game. The new map is spooky in the best possible way, but my biggest complaint are the perks. Most of them are garbage, but they can fix them. Maybe. Next year. Or never. BHBR is kind of slow at balancing perks, but that about wraps up my review of the Silent Hill DLC. Keep in mind this is the public test build, and anything you saw in this video may change when it goes live. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe for future content.